Hey, what's up, YouTube? On this video, we're gonna go over the LS Swap basics and cover everything from like high performance, um, extremely uh, expensive swaps to like your budget junkyard LS Swaps, the pro and cons of each. And we're gonna go over all the different options you have, especially if you're just starting your swap or if you're halfway into it and you're trying to determine what headers to get, what harness to get, stuff like that. And I have my boy, uh, Danny here, Don Slick, what up? because he came from being a customer to now he's actually doing LS swaps. Uh, so he has like a lot of information to share as far as doing like budget swaps. Um, what, what he ran into as far as issues, um, and he has pro and cons. Um, he ran the OEM harness before he switched over to Terminator X. So he go over that and we're going to cover all that stuff guys. So stay tuned. And um, hopefully you'll learn something. All right, so this is uh, Don Slick's uh, second LS Swap uh, Monte Carlo. So we're going to cover, the first thing we're going to cover is shops. Find the right shops, what his experience was, because he did find a shop uh, before he came to me. So we're going to go over that. So um, let's go ahead and go over finding shop and what was your experience with um, your white Monte Carlo when it came to finding that shop. What's up, YouTube? Don Slick here. So let's start off with... Um finding the right shop. So in my experience, uh, I started off on like YouTube University so I can get a little bit of knowledge behind how to do a swap. And um, the first thing was, it's gonna be more than a one person job. So that's why I end up not initially doing it. So um, shopping around, uh, got a decent quote, can't remember off the top of my head about three or four thousand dollars to do the swap so how did you find a shop was it through Insta was it through social media was it through youtube how'd you through yelp how'd you find a shop i believe it was i think it was either facebook or instagram um so it was a guy in san bernardino uh, i'm not gonna put no names out there or anything like that but uh he charged me like three or four thousand and then you know half deposit so i think i gave him about fifteen hundred two grand um came to pick the car up and that was it so within that quote was also a timeline quote of two months and i'm like okay that that's doable right or so i'm thinking um so was that quote like parts of labor or just labor it, or? That was the initial quote. Again, I'm, I'm new to the LS swap game. So that I'm thinking in my mind that that was everything, right? So I'm not the one to like bug people while, they're, while they gotta do their job. So I waited two months. You know, one thing I wish he would've did was update me through the way, but he didn't do that, right? So I hit him up at the two month mark. Hey man, what's, what's going on? How's the swap going, right? Now comes all the excuses, what we have to, the, the extra stuff that we have to get done, all the problems he ran into. And then, you know, in my mind, I'm like, well, dude, why didn't you communicate that, you know, through the process? So that was one of my, my first red flags, right? So the lack of communication when it comes to, um, I guess the customer service portion of it. So from the time he dropped out the swap, to the time the first red flag came up, how long was that? The two month mark, right? Okay. So his quote, his deadline, two months, right? I feel like he should have called me, right? Where are you with the swap? So, um, and I felt like right at that point is when work actually started getting done because then I started getting photos. Then I started getting, you know, mechanics, photos of mechanics under progress. the car. Yeah, yeah, then I started getting progress. Now I, I started seeing the, uh, the motor come out. Um, I don't know if you mentioned already. So uh, not this car, but uh, the 84 white Monte Carlo hardtop that I have uh, had a 60 swap um, and a 4080. So then I start uh, seeing the 305 out of the engine bay. Like I started getting all these photos then um, right at that two month mark. And um, so I was like, okay, man. So, all right, thanks for the update. I'm not pressed. What, what's the new timeline? What's the new quote? Um, and he gave me like, well, I got to do such and such. Give me another two months. All right, cool. I'm not in a rush. He didn't 
price wise, it didn't go up on me, so I'm I'm extra cool. So do your thing, man. So that quote included include the the parts too, parts and labor. <laughs> um, you didn't bring him the engine, right? No, I didn't. Okay, so it I was didn't. including parts and labor. Yep, including yeah. parts and labor. Um, and then after the new time quote, right? Same kind of the same thing happened. He, you know, kind of like photo dumped me with the, the engine. The engine was, uh, the motor was clean. So it was like a refurbished uh, 6.0. Um, looked like a new um, water pump was on it. Cause you know, that's like the first thing you see. So it makes it look even cleaner, mm -hmm. right? Um, I was like, dang man, cool. So I, I ain't gonna lie. Being a rookie in the game, when I seen that picture and I seen a picture uh, of the motor and the uh, transmission, I was like super happy. I'm like, dang, that's what's going in my car. Um, so, um, to try to cut this the long story short missed another uh timeline quote um and it just got to the point to where now i want my car back so i had to like kind of force him to give me my car like put my car back together enough so i can trailer it back so we're at like what four and a half months yep. five months okay. so by the time that i went to go get my car it did crank up um uh, I can't say that it was drivable because I, I trailered it back, but I did hear it crank up, sounded pretty decent. All right. Um, then I got back home. After I got back home, I tried to drive it and had all kind of like tuning issues to, to sum it up. Mm -hmm. Right. It, it, it was not drivable mm -hmm. at all. Um, and that's when I found Swap. All right, so that was uh, Don Slick's first experience with the LS Swap on his 84 Monte Carlo. This one's obviously a little bit different. We did a crit engine, an LS3. We also did a rebuilt 4L80 with a new converter, Terminator X, and a bunch of all new stuff. So uh, real quick, talk about the differences as far as this LS Swap and what you learned from your first one, pro and cons and everything. Um, So from the 84 to the 87, one of the main differences was, I guess the, one of the biggest differences was the car, right? So the 84 cost me about seven grand, right? So just kind of like keep that in mind. So I, I bought a car for seven grand, with the original 305 in there. It drove, I, I drove it from like San Bernardino back to San Diego, you know, the typical issue would have, you would have with something like that. So a little bit of overheating, but it made it, right? Made it back to San Diego versus, you know, I spent about, I think it was what, 17 grand for this, uh 87 but it was good to go the owner took care of the car so um um minor cracks in the dash those type of thing that car was good to go i was actually dailying this car with the 305 like 305 was strong like i was still spinning tires things like that so right off the bat the your foundation what you got to deal with seven grand to 17 grand that was number one right number two was uh obviously uh refurbished or junkyard motor with the uh 60 in the 84 versus uh ls3 crate engine brand new engine right warranty same thing with the transmission um those are going to be um the two biggest differences going budget and going new right because you don't there's a lot of rework th that you don't have to do um what else so price wise oh 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 price wise so i got a few notes here so yep i already told you the price of the car so um i think i mentioned it already it was like three or four grand for you know the swap in the motor type deal with with the 84 right so with this one the crate um 8100 in my notes right here for the ls3 crate and that was complete right so intake to oil pan if you understand what that means right um i spent um i spent some extra on some uh, injectors some bigger injectors that was about 1100 bucks um upgraded uh transmission um mp uh transmission stage three um uh, let's, let's let's just do four grand for that one. A new torque converter, fifteen hundred. Um, I already told you injectors, 
and uh, upgraded fuel pump. So the Hellcat fuel pump went in there and uh, for the ECU uh, Terminator uh, X Max. What else? So again, guys, when we do these, like we don't get everything um, top of the line, most expensive shit we could buy. For example, the radiator. This is an Amazon radiator yes, here. Yes, yes. And we upgrade to the spa fans. So that way we get enough flow so we don't overheat. But we still have, um, I think we pay, what, what, 500 bucks for everything? Radiator and fans? Might be rounding up, but yeah, it, yeah. Was, it was fairly cheap. Um, but literally, like, every, like, this radiator setup worked a thousand times better than the one on the 84, right? Um and I, I would say like the biggest thing when it comes to like cooling um, that I've noticed, it, it may seem simple, but it it's crazy. It's the fans. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> I had to eat a little bit of crow uh, going back and forth with uh, uh, Swap here when we tested that theory. Um, so for example, on that Chevelle over there, we went top of the line with the radiator. We got the Be Cool radiator. That unit with the fans and everything was around thirteen hundred dollars, but you get just as an efficient unit with something from Amazon like this. And we have videos on my Instagram where we test it out. So this comes with stock fans, twelve inch fans, but they're garbage. So if you swap them out, put some good spall fans on there, and keep the radiator. Um, the radiator was around three hundred bucks. Each fan's around one hundred twenty, maybe. So around the door, you get a good, efficient unit for like uh, 500 bucks. So like I said, we, I don't focus on like selling them the most expensive shit. I make sure it just, it just works and it, it's a daily driver. This is a daily driver, right? Oh yeah, yeah. I, I try yeah. to daily as much as I can. Um, yeah, I have more miles on my car than he has on his truck, which uh, I'm proud of. But um, one thing I, I neglected to mention too was, um, so engine, transmission mount, oil pan, I got about 1300 bucks for that. Um, oil pan reason being is because I have a G body and with that crate engine, um, the oil pan, um, it just gave me more clearance. So that, that's why I decided to do that. Um, so, so any that. regrets, any regrets going with a completely like crate engine, um, higher, uh, val how, how you higher value parts versus, um, getting a junkyard build. I don't know man that's a weird question for me so regrets no because i love my car i love the way it drives and everything um but if i was still in a, a budget mindset i, I think i could have still got away with the 60 right so the only thing is the the ecu right so if i would have went 60 with this one or a junkyard or a refurbished build with this one i still would have did the ecu to make it a whole lot easier the terminator right? x yep the Terminator X, my bad, um, to uh, get it started up and, and, and uh, initially tuned and everything. I think I still could have got away with that and been happy, but, um, you know, I wanted to, with this build, I wanted to have a good foundation so I can build for the future, right? That's why I did the, the E85, the upgraded injectors, uh, what is fuel, pump. The, uh, fuel pump, the, um, the camshaft before we put it in right uh so that was the initial thought with why this build is a lot more than the 84. okay so last thing um someone's new looking at ls swapping any vehicle they have monte carlo camaro whatever they have and they're looking around and they're getting different quotes um what do you recommend as far as find the correct shop finding the correct shop first and foremost you have to know your goal right um i can say with the 84 i was so indecisive i didn't even know what i wanted to do i just oh i wanted the ls swap car no what is your goal man are you about to daily this thing are you about to take this thing to the track uh do you want do you want a weekend cruiser um we're talking about like your horsepower goals dependability depend yeah all of that so know what you want in your swap right and then start looking for shops that can accommodate that right so if you're looking at some shops advertisement or whatever like do they fit your goals like can they accommodate your goals like if it's a speed shop but you only wanted a a, a cruiser probably not going to be for you right because that shop is going to 
be dealing with uh, higher end parts and, and, and things like that. If you just want a cruiser, then you don't need, you're probably working more on the budget end, right? You just want something dependable and drivable, right? Uh, any any reviews, red flags? Reviews, that, that is a big thing, right? So make sure that, and, and again, like when we're talking about shops, a shop doesn't necessarily have to be a, a, a building or a place of business, man. You have uh, guys like Swap here, man. We, we do these things in the driveway, right? So another thing, right? So the 84, you know, four to and a half to like six months or whatever, right? And my swap still wasn't finished. We finished this swap in, what was it? Eight, eight weekends, totaling eight days, literally. Uh, 305 out of the uh, engine bay, got that off the same day. Um, uh, cleaned up the engine bay a little bit. Not as much as I wanted to, but cleaned it up a little bit and popped this thing right in. And that was day for day, eight days. Dropping the so fuel tank. So think about it. Like if, if we would have worked on it through the week, this would have been in a week. Yeah. So. So it's a difference when you know what you're doing. Uh, for so, sure. Right? Another, another thing I'd recommend is if you're looking for a shop, look for previous customers or look to see if they have other builds that they have done. Like if they're like, hey, we just finished this. 69 Camaro, we just finished this uh, 83 C10, whatever they have. If they can show you work, that means they're familiar with the LS engine. They're familiar with what it takes, fuel system-wise, plumbing-wise, cooling-wise. And they could probably give you a more accurate quote and a more accurate time frame. Also, if you ever go to a shop um, and you see in the shop a bunch of cars like that collecting dust, that means that some that's someone's car that they've been waiting for for a while and it hasn't been done either. It could be the customer doesn't have the money. Most likely it's a shopper and it's an issue. And they decided to move on to a different customer that has money up front and try to tackle their stuff before they go back to that one and lose more money. Yeah, me too. So so the other um, part I had to add when it comes to finding the right shop, um, I wanted to find someone local, which I, I think I looked up with uh, Swap here, right? So. The first one I had to take to San Bernardino, so I couldn't really check up on it or do all of that stuff, right? So a local shop, I can verify his work, right? So, and if he did have reviews, I could pull up at a Cars and Coffee or whatever and look at those swaps, right? Um, who was before me? Was it Rick, uh, uh, Richard? I've... Uh, with the 69 Camaro swap that he did, right? I saw that work. So I think it was um, Paula before. Saw the was it Mike Paula before you? Huh? Was it Mike Paula before yours? I don't remember. I think Mike was before me, but again, I had physical cars that I could see run. I can hear the experience from them shops. Um, and that's why I chose to try to find a local guy. But the reviews, the reviews, the reviews are going to be one of the top things that you look for when you're looking for a shop, right? Um, Another thing I want to mention too is um, even if you go onto their social media, I've noticed there's some shops or some people at DLS swaps that have a huge following and they'll bring in cars weekly. Like, hey, we're going to do LS swap on this truck. Hey, we're going to do LS swap on this fucking Ford Pinto. Hey, we're going to do LS swap on this freaking 2000 Maxim or some crazy shit. But they always show you what they're going to do. They never show you how they finished it or how they did it. So make sure if you're following someone, make sure they have finished products. That's the same reason why I try to dyno every car so you can actually see that it's done and it runs and it puts out a good amount of horsepower versus just empty promises to get more customers in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I, I'll vouch for that, right? So um, before I reached out to Swap, I did look at his page, right? And um, it was the process. It wasn't snippets or thumbnails of the process. So there was the, the original motor in there, right? There was the taking out the motor there was the putting the new engine in right um there it was it was the process the fuel right? system the, the fuel system like you don't think about that stuff you everybody's just thinking about okay engine maybe somebody will think about the transmission getting swapped but nobody's thinking about you know um from the cooling system all the way to the rear end like that's a swap mm -hmm. Um, like even even just sticking the radiator there is not enough. It gets, it's it's got to get wired up. It's got to get hooked <laughs> yeah, up so it doesn't work off a switch or some dumb shit. It has to work off the computer. Yes. So you could easily drop an engine like that's not impressive. 
it's impressive when you actually run it, you dyno and you pull numbers out because you're showing, hey, look, I thrash this engine and it puts out numbers. Because yep. I've seen some shops would just have freaking something like that. Hey, look, we put an LS engine in there and there's no wiring, there's no coal packs. It looks pretty as fuck, but there's nothing in there showing you that it's complete, that it could drive. It's just like, hey, look, we dropped an engine in here. We're doing shit and they're not really doing shit. Yep, yep. I, I remember having to um, shorten my drive shaft. You know, like this is these are things that um I guess rookies when I was a rookie in the game I wasn't thinking about all that stuff. So um I think I'm at like novice level now. I know a little <laughs> bit. But um So that that's basically um this video is all to cover experiences with shops. So it's already getting pretty long, so on the next video we're gonna cover um junkyard swaps, like what to look for a junkyard, pro and con, stuff like that, especially if you want to do it yourself. And do it for your budget, but before we leave, anything else you want to mention that you might have forgot? Nah. Um, and again, guys, this is not a promo for me. I'm not fucking trying to do your swap. Don't even contact me about giving you a quote, especially <laughs> uh, because I'm I'm hella expensive. This is more information for you guys, so you don't get ripped off. I don't want you to say, hey man, this guy quoted me twelve hundred bucks, complete parts and labor, and then you go and like a year later you're showing you get your car back. You know what I mean? I want you guys to be aware of like what to look for when it comes to LS swaps, what to expect and not go in there blindly. Or if you're halfway into it, or maybe your car's at a shop and it's sitting like that for the past eight months, you could be like, hey, you know what? It's time to pick it up, yeah, find yeah. someone new. So this is more of a heads up. It's not an advertising for me. I don't need no more customers. I'm good. But this is more of like a, a PSA for you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it's crazy. So 84 white Monte Carlo, four to six months, still wasn't ready to go, uh, 87 uh monte carlo ls3 swap in eight days with two guys yeah two so all right guys so stay tuned to the next video we're gonna cover um junkyard ls swaps and that should be cheaper if you could turn a wrench